Live for God Studio Productions. This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. The greatest peace, the greatest hope, the greatest rest comes from immersing ourselves in the wonderful resignation and commitment that says, God, the pressure is on right now, and I don't know what to do. I don't know what choice to make. I don't have any good options. Things don't look so good for me. But your will be done. It's not about me. It's about my Father. When we discover how to pray that legitimately, it will totally, totally change our lives. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Is that possible? Is that really possible? I want you to remember this. This is something worth writing down. God only acts according to his will, not yours. God only acts according to his will, not yours. In order for God's will to be done on earth, it must be done in the lives of those on earth. And that means you. You are responsible for your own obedience. You're not responsible for anybody else's obedience. Obedience. You're responsible for your own obedience. It's your life. And so you need to start there in getting God's will done on earth. It starts in you. It starts with you. I love that Jesus taught us to pray this. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You see, God's will can be done here on earth in the same way that it's done in heaven. It's not going to be everything that heaven is, obviously. We've, we've got some amazing things in store for us. But God said his kingdom can exist on earth. It's possible. That means that we really can have heaven on earth. But it begins with understanding that God only acts according to his will, not yours. I want you to see, and we're going to close with these seven things about heaven. Things in heaven that can exist here on earth. The way heaven can exist here on earth. Number one, heaven is God's kingdom without the dominion of sin. Now the earth has sin. There's no question about that. Man, just look at what happened in Congress, this, or Washington this past week. We are, I mean, I've never seen that chaotic, evil, um, it, it, it was just ungodly. It was just ungodly what we saw happening. And, and, and the thing about it is, nobody, you know what, the truth of the matter is, Every one of those people owes me an apology. And you. I can't believe we voted them into office. What were we thinking? Anyway, don't get me started on that. That's... <laughs> uh, but heaven is God's kingdom without the dominion of sin. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 34, I tell you, do not swear at all by either by heaven, for it is God's throne. God's throne exists without the dominion of sin. And your life can exist in a heavenly way without the dominion of sin. That's why Jesus died on the cross. To forgive your sin and to cleanse you, 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sin, he forgives us and cleanses us. The forgiveness is immediate. The cleansing sometimes takes a while. Heaven is God's kingdom without the dominion of sin. Secondly, heaven is a place full of God's gifts. And God has gifts for you now. Look at this. 
If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? And I want you to key in on this last little phrase, those who ask him. Do you know what that verse says? God gives you permission to ask him. I love, I really do love this, when we take our grandchildren to the store. I love that they are so comfortable around us that they could say, can I have that? I want that. You know, they do that. And I'm not offended by it. Sometimes I say yes. Most of the time I say yes. It's a good thing that Marsha's along because she'll go, no, you can't have that. Uh, but that doesn't offend me. That doesn't offend me that, that I love them and I want them to have gifts. Drives their mom and dad nuts, but I don't care. It's, I want them to have gifts. Well, your heavenly father feels the same way about you. Ask him. I want, I, I want that. Can I have that? And sometimes God will go, okay. And sometimes he'll go, no, we already have that at home. <laughs> so it's, it's okay to ask, be the child. He's your father, be the child. Heaven is a place full of God's gifts and that can happen on earth too. Number three, heaven is a place where God's people gather. Matthew 8, 11, I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. God's people gather together. Heaven is a place where God's people gather. That's why we need each other. It's good for God's people to gather together. It's good for God's people to spend time together. Heaven is a place of knowledge and understanding. Matthew 13, 11, he replied, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them, the unbelievers. God has given this to you. In fact, you can find it in his word. He's given it to you. And it's, it, you, you can have that knowledge and understanding. Will it be complete? Not yet. When we get to heaven, it'll be complete. But you can have knowledge and understanding now. That's why God gave us the Holy Spirit so that we can have a, an expanded sense of knowledge and understanding of what God's up to and what he wants. And then I love this one. Heaven is a place of childlike wonder. Matthew 18. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And he called a little child and had him stand among them, and he said, I'll tell you the truth. Unless you change and become little, like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Again, it's coming back to that father-child thing that God really wants us to get a hold of. And this example that Jesus uses is so important to us because what he's saying is you need to be humble like a child. And children are naturally humble. They really are. I mean, I hear it all the time. You know, I can't do it. Well, I'm an adult. I can. You know, you know we, we have this idea, oh, I can get it done. Now, children do say, I can do it, and they can't. But you know, the issue is they really believe they can. They're being honest. I, I can do it. Let me do it. I can do it. When I was... Uh, uh, how old was I? Seven? No, six, six or seven, somewhere in there. I knew I could fly. And uh, I told my father I could fly. And he said, son, you, 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 you can't fly. And I said, I, Dad, I can fly. I know I can fly. If you'll pick me up and toss me in the air, you'll see I can fly. Son, you can't fly. Yes, I can, Dad. I know I can. Dad, just toss me into the air and watch. 
okay. <laughs> Went over to a little grassy area. He takes me and he tosses me up into the air. For one second, I flew. <laughs> it wasn't a pretty landing, but I flew. <laughs> but you'll hear this humbleness from a child. I, I don't know. Show me. Jack, our, our, I don't know, he's four years old going on 27. Um, He'll say something, you know, what, what, what is this, what is this? And we'll know that he knows something or he's thought of this or he's already told us about something. And we'll ask him, well, what is that? And he'll go, tell me. Tell me. I want to know. He, he, he is, he's honest about what he knows and what he doesn't know. And if, and if he wants to know, he seeks after it. He's a child. That's humbleness. A child, you'll hear a child say, I'm not strong enough. A child will say all of these things because they're just transparent. And that's what God wants out of us. Just be honest. Just be transparent with God. That's humbleness. God, you know I'm like this. God, I, I can't do it. God, I, I don't know what to do. Tell me. The sixth thing is that heaven is a place of complete access to God. Matthew 18, 10. See that you do not look down on one of these little ones, these children. For I tell you that their angels, look at this, look at this, look at this. Their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven. Did you get that? There are angels assigned to you. And I'm a little afraid to get to heaven because I think mine are probably going to slap me around when they get to heaven, when I get there. And rightly so. Look at that. That says, that says that God is so concerned about you that he gives you his own creation to protect you and to guide you and to lead you. And so it's very important that we understand that God's watching out for, for us and we have complete access to us. The angels have uh, FaceTime with God is what it's saying. They have FaceTime with God about you. Oh, they're talking about you. Oh, they're talking about you. But you have complete access to God. And not only do you have, do you have complete access to God, but angels have complete access to God about you. You're pretty well connected. You're pretty well connected. And then one more. Heaven is a place of treasure. Matthew 19, 21 says, Jesus answered, if you want to be perfect, he's talking to the rich young ruler, if you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. What Jesus was saying was, yes, you do have treasure in heaven. You do have treasure in heaven. But more importantly, it's important for us to understand that we can have treasure here on earth. Treasures that are godly. Treasures that God wants to use and give us. Things that are important to us. Now a lot of you thought when we use the word treasure, you thought money. That could mean anything. What is your treasure? What are your treasures? And God says, if they're godly, you can enjoy them even here on earth. Amen. So you see, when God is teaching us to pray, he's teaching us to have a relationship, a father-child relationship with a God who loves us so much that when we go to the store and we say, I want that, he'll go, eh, let me think about it. He wants us to be so transparent and honest that we become humble before him and saying, I can't, or I can, or I don't know what to do, or I need you. He wants us to be children that crawl up into his lap and we let him hold us and sing to us and tell us that he loves us. That's what he's looking for in your life. 
Next Sunday, we'll continue in our study of the Lord's Prayer. Next Sunday, it gets good. Give us this day our daily bread. Wait till you see what that's all about. On behalf of Dan Hurst and the Open Class, we want to thank you for watching. We hope it was a blessing.